How you guys doing? Today we're talking about drag and why helicopters really don't fly all that fast. Um, some helicopters fly faster than others and there's reasons for that. So I just want to go through a few of the basics of aerodynamics, talk about a couple of the factors. Uh, today we're going to be using the Cabri G2 as the example. And uh, so I just want to break it down into three different parts, okay? The three big factors behind speed in a helicopter um, the, the three big drag factors are you're getting a third of your drag from the undercarriage, the skid gear down here underneath the helicopter. You're getting a third of your drag from the fuselage of the helicopter right here. We call this uh, parasite drag. Anything that's not active in producing lift, that would be the skids as well. And then you're getting a third of your drag from the rotor system and the rotor head up here. Um, this guy right up here, okay? Now, that's a lot. Um, and, and those are those are design features that um, all helicopters, uh, you know, have some form or another of this. Now, if you look at something like a Sikorsky S76 or a different couple of different models, um, they have retractable gear. That's a big factor. You're getting rid of a third of your drag if you get rid of that uh, undercarriage, that skid gear underneath. So that's uh, that's one factor that makes them go faster. That's why you, you look at a helicopter like the S76 um, that does fly quite a bit faster than a lot of other models. Um, Another factor is this rotor system or the rotor head up top here. Um, you see how this, this here doesn't really produce um, an a, a efficient area for lack of drag, right? There's all these pitch links and pitch rods, uh, the, uh, the main rotor drive shaft and everything. There's a lot of stuff up here that's creating a lot of drag. And so um, people that are able to cowl that in, like Sikorsky is trying to do that right now with the, the new Raider, the S, uh, what are they calling it? The S64 uh, or something like that, um, Raider helicopter. And, and they've done testing and stuff, trying to cowl in that uh, rotor head up top. And that's definitely a big factor that can reduce a lot of drag. You can get the helicopter to go faster like that. Um, and then we talk about parasite drag. And I said parasite is anything that's not active in producing lift. And uh, just a little play on words here. Um, you see all these bugs on the windscreen right here? Okay, um, those are some parasites that, that we don't really want on the helicopter. This thing needs to be washed right now. Um, so that actually is a factor. So we're talking about the actual fuselage itself, but then you have dirt and grime and things like that. That actually reduces the uh, speed as well because it creates more drag, the more dirt the, the, and stuff that you have on the surface. So this helicopter, believe it or not, would actually fly a little bit faster um, after we give it a nice polished wax, we clean everything up um, and, and we get a slippery surface again um, over the whole surface of the helicopter. Even things like this, right? Um, this guy here is actually active in producing lift, so this wouldn't be considered parasite drag, but you can see that there's, there's a bunch of bugs on the back here. You guys, we're back into summertime, man. It's, uh, it's pretty much every day now that these helicopters get, need to get washed. Um, it's crazy how quickly it happens. We transitioned from the winter where you're not blowing up nearly as much dust. Um, there's not as many bugs flying around in the air. Uh, so you're gonna wash the helicopter every week or sometimes uh, even every month. Um, and then you get into the summertime, you take these things out flying a couple times and they get covered in, uh, in bugs, a little bit of dust because you're, you're kicking up a lot when you're doing hovering practice and stuff like that. So, um, so this thing definitely needs a wash if we want to keep the speeds up on it, if we want to keep it going faster. Um, now, a few things to talk about with the fuselage because different helicopters have um, a completely different uh, fuselage uh, systems and everything. We, uh, one of the big things we noticed on the Schweitzer, uh, one of the reasons that it doesn't fly very fast, it's got a very broad sort of big flat nose on the front of it. And so that's not super aerodynamic to start with. And then around the back, we had the big engine compartment and all that kind of stuff um, that it had no cowlings on it. These guys here are called cowlings. And so there's no cowlings or anything on it. And so the air would come around um, the, the, the surface and then it would get stuck back here and it would kind of create a, a dead zone. And that creates a lot of drag in the back part. Cabri uh, Gimbal has done a great job with that. They put these nice cowlings on. You guys have seen this all before, but a couple of simple latches and these guys will open up. And then you have full access for pre-flights and all this kind of stuff, maintenance and everything, to be able to get into your engine compartment. And then you can just close that back up again. And um, something that's really nice about a carbon fiber body, so this is a fully carbon fiber body, 
Something that's nice about that is you get rid of all the rivets and things like that. The Robinsons, uh, a lot of other helicopters have a lot of rivets down the, the sides of them, everything, and you, you get drag. Everything that ha that's on the helicopter, you get drag from. This um, piano hinge right here, you're gonna get a little bit of drag off of that. Uh, these little bolts right here, you're gonna get some drag off of that. You know, this air intake or this in intake here where the exhaust comes out, you're gonna get some off of that. So everything, right? Um, but they've done a, a very great job at creating this nice clean design, um, fairly aerodynamic. So for a small helicopter, this is relatively um, s speed efficient, okay? So this thing you're flying around 80, um, 90 knots, depending on how much power you wanna be pulling. And so that's fairly fast, I would say, for a, a two-seat two helicopter. Um, but the factors that I talked about here, I think it has the uh, ability, it's leaving room open for somebody to come along, design something that's more efficient on the undercarriage, taking a little bit more thought into the overall aerodynamic design of the body, and then trying to cowl in some, in some way or another um, that rotor head to be able to get more speed. Because if you can get more speed, you can get more efficiency. In a training helicopter, it's not really as important. Um, you're, obviously, it's nice to get um, places faster, which we found that being actually a big benefit for us in the Cabri. We can get out into the mountains and everything way faster than we used to be able to. Um, but in general, you're not going super long distances. But if you're having a private owned helicopter, like an R44 or an R66 or um, something like that, it's nice to have some extra speed, some extra knots, so you can get out further and actually go on trips and do things like that. So um, anyways, just a little rant today. I was, uh, I was just looking at the helicopter and and uh, thinking about drag and, and things like that when I was looking at the bugs on the windscreen and it kind of got me thinking about parasite drag and everything. So I thought I'd do a quick video for you guys to explain that um, to sort of hopefully uh, demystify why helicopters don't go super fast um, and a lot of times airplanes uh, go a lot faster and they don't they don't have that kind of stuff you see a huge difference between uh, airplanes that have retractable gear and ones that don't so Anyways, that's my little rant on uh, drag and uh, dynamic aerodynamics of helicopters. Hope you guys enjoyed this short one. We're going to talk to you on the next one. See ya.